the rules of thumb where it has this little green label on the opposite side. It opens from the center. There. So what's inside here is your self-contained midline, which we'll go over in a sec, and then an adhesive attachment tool, and then your label. What you'll need also, uh, if you want to do this kit, is you'll just need a J-loop um, that you flushed and um, a clay to attach to the end of it. Our uh, J loops at hospital center have the clays already attached, but some of you might not, so you just put a clay in and just make sure it's flush and ready to go. Um, we're going to do this with uh, aseptic technique, so you don't have to be sterile, which means you can have an ultrasound pro cover or a tagaderm on the end of it. Um, and so, uh, what we have here um, is we've got this model where we have our, our vessel here. Um, and what you're going to do is essentially you have this kit and it's got a couple little things on it. One is it the, the, this purple slide in the middle progresses your wire, right? And so you're going to progress your wire when you're ready to tap through the vessel. And then these wings on the side that are pink actually progress your catheter forward once you're ready to put your catheter in. So it works essentially like a peripheral IV otherwise. Um, what I would recommend is doing an overgrip when your actual hands on top rather than a pencil grip. Um, when it comes to flattening your catheter when you're getting towards the vessel, it's pretty hard to do so with your hand underneath the catheter. Whereas above it, you've got a lot more room to flatten. Uh, the next step that you want to think about is entering pretty close to your ultrasound. In fact, I go, actually where I'm entering the skin is directly under the ultrasound. Most of the time, these vessels are pretty superficial. And so if you enter with the space between where you're entering the skin and where your ultrasound probe is, by the time you get to you see your vessel, your needle on the screen. You'll often be past the vessel or already in it, and so you want to you want to enter almost underneath the ultrasound, right? And so if you look at the ultrasound uh, right now, you can see the screen. You can see my needle tip right at the center, right? Now one of the keys here is you want to make sure you're on your needle tip and not your shaft. And what, what I do is I basically move my ultrasound up the arm until I can't see my needle tip anymore. So my tip has gone away. Now I move my needle again, and now I can see it again. And then I move my ultrasound so my tip goes away. Then I see my needle tip again. Ultrasound, tip has gone away. Needle, there's my tip again, right? And I'm just essentially doing that back and forth motion until I get all the way down to the middle. Right? Inch by inch. I like to really move my ultrasound so the needle tip completely goes away rather than trying to follow it in view the whole time. Because I find if you try to keep it in view the whole time, you tend to move your needle past tip and now I'm on the needle shaft and it's harder for me to see where I am. Whereas if I keep moving it until I can't see the tip anymore, I can be certain that every time it appears, it's actually the tip. You see, I've made it all the way down to the vessel wall now, right? And so now when I'm at the vessel wall, what I'll do is I flatten my needle as far as I can. And again, this is where this overhand grip is very useful. Right? And again, I progress my probe until I no longer can see my tip. Then I move my tip a little bit. You see how I can see it again. I move my ultrasound probe so it's gone. Tip, probe, gone. And I keep doing this until I get into the vessel. Right, now you can see, you see how my needle tip is in the center of the vessel. Now, before I thread my wire, I actually want to walk the needle up the vessel farther to make sure I'm in the center of the vessel. So what I do is I make sure I'm flat. I'll move my ultrasound until the needle tip goes away. Then I move my needle again. You can see it. And now I'm just slowly walking my needle up the vessel. I'm getting towards the back of the wall, so I probably kind of walked up the vessel as far as I can without damaging the posterior vessel wall. Right? So at this point, I will now pull back a little bit, and I'm going to progress my needle until my finger just comes to the purple slide, and I slide this forward until I feel a click. Once I have a click, it's in place, and my wire is now in place. Right? And now what I can do is I can put down my ultrasound. This hand is holding my needle in place or my catheter in place and I'm not going to move it and then I'm just going to take with these two fingers grab the two butterfly connectors I'm going to push that forward right? and it basically goes forward until it slides into place right and then I can pull my needle out the back okay. you've got a little stopper on here now right so this little stopper is a plug you won't back bleed at this moment right and so this gives me an opportunity now to clean the patient with gauze I can wipe off all the ultrasound gel and at this point I'll basically you lift this up 
and then you can just pop it off, right? And now you'll start the back loop, but if you have your jade loop ready that's already pre-flushed, then you can just connect that, pull blood back, make sure you're getting blood return, and then you can flush the catheter. Right? The final key is just securing it in place. So they come with these little adhesive securement devices. If you take a close look, there are these two little wings or bumps on the sides here. That in lines, if you look on your catheter, you see on the pink portion, you've got those two little nubs on the outside. Those two things should come together, right? And so I just make sure that those are in line and then I'll push down on the securement device until I feel a click, right? Once it's clicked, these two things are together and now I can adhesive, secure it to the patient. And so you have these wings and I can just grab this little part here that says stat lock, pull that out, and that will, sometimes it tears, but it essentially will adhesive to one side and then I can do the same to the other side. And we're in place. Right. The last thing you want to do is make sure you have this little label that says power glide. This is to indicate that this line is a midline. So when the patient goes to the floor, to the ICU, or wherever they're going, we can make sure that everyone is aware that this is a midline and not a pick. And so we'll just take this off. Sometimes it's tricky with gloves on. And so, and we just secure that to the J loop. Like so.